Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to Mail Art Month Day 6. Today I'm using this stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. This is the slider camera and typewriter stamp set from the latest card kit. This is one that I designed and I have been dreaming of making the card I'm going to show you today for so long. You get those uh, die cuts and little elements in the card kit as well, but I'm not going to be using those today. I am going to be using the coordinating dies that come in the card kit. Now in the card kit, you only get the dies for the typewriter, but there are dies for the camera as well. For this card, I'm just going to be using the typewriter though. So it works out. I can use those dies. Started out by stamping the typewriter in the charcoal ink from Simon's the Stamp. And my ink pad was a little bit dry. These positively saturated ink pads do need to be re-inked quite often. Um, the, the nature of how the pad is, that kind of foam pad, uh, really just soaks up lots of ink. So I do need to re-ink this one. And because it's a little dry, I did end up stamping it about three times to get a really solid image. But it worked out great after I stamped it three times. So after I stamp the typewriter, I'm actually going to stamp the paper that's going to be coming out of the typewriter in my slider. So I'm stamping that paper, and then I'm stamping a greeting that's going to go on the inside. There's lots of greetings here that will fit on that paper. I chose the one that says Happy Love Day. And just like I did with the typewriter, I did end up stamping this multiple times. I had that little piece of paper left over and decided to use it. And it was so tiny, I couldn't keep it in the corner of my misty. So I did end up putting it on a sticky mat and that held it in place and in the corner of my misty for all this stamping. I used cherry ink to stamp a little tiny heart from the stamp set right below that greeting, just for a little bit of color. There's not going to be a ton of color on the main elements of the card. So I thought it'd be nice to have the color there. So I've got six colors of cardstock from Simon. I've got lipstick red, lemon chiffon, green apple, surf blue, doll pink, and cotton candy. And I cut little tiny quarter inch strips of cardstock using my trimmer. And I'm going to be adhering these to the front of my card in sort of like a rainbow fashion. Not quite rainbow, but close. Before we get to that, I did use the coordinating die set that came in the card kit to cut out the paper and also the typewriter. And the die that cuts the typewriter puts this little slit right up there at the top. It's positioned perfectly to have this paper come in and out of the typewriter. So you could position it in, you know, with it already out, the greeting showing, or you can make it more interactive like I'm going to do today. So here are some white cardstock. This is actually the front of my card and I'm adhering the strips of cardstock. Just something to note, because I'm making a slider card and I want to have a tab on the top edge of the card and want that tab to hang out over the edge, I did cut my white cardstock here to be a little more than a quarter inch shorter than a regular A2 card. So it's actually about five and just shy of five and a quarter tall. I adhered those strips of cardstock and then used a ruler and an X-Acto knife or a craft knife to lop off the extra. And now here's that pull tab. This is about an inch and a quarter wide and I used that same lipstick red cardstock. I've stamped the word pull at the very top in some white pigment ink and then coated that in white embossing powder. You can see I tried stamping it once before on the other end, but I didn't like how that turned out. And since the bottom portion of this tab isn't even going to be showing. I decided to just rotate it around and stamp on the other end. I, I rounded those corners with a corner chomper, and then now I'm going to start creating the slider mechanism for my card. I first taped that paper in place where I want it to be when it's hidden, and then I brought in some thin strips of foam foam tape. These are from Waffle Flower. And I put those on the sides of where that paper is. Not quite right on it, but really close. And I also added a little strip of foam tape to the very bottom. This is going to stop that paper from sliding too far down. So that's going to stop the paper. So I have this little well there. And then I'm just kind of flipping it over and testing it to make sure that that paper doesn't get caught on my foam adhesive everything looks good. 
So now I'm going to position how I want my typewriter with the paper pulled out to be. I want to see how big it's going to be and how much room it's going to take on the card. I taped that open and then I just used my pencil and marked a line on my card so I know where it's going to be. And now I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want the actual slider mechanism to be. I'm going to cut a hole in the front of my card here and it's going to be a channel where that slider goes up and down. So I marked kind of the safe zone of where this opening could be. I want it to be right behind where the actual paper is, the slider paper, and I don't want it to go up above where the typewriter will be. So I drew in this rectangle for where I'm going to cut out this hole and then I'm going to put my typewriter right over the top just to make sure that where I've drawn my rectangle will be completely concealed by my typewriter. Then I used my X-Acto knife and that ruler to cut out this rectangle piece out of the front of my card. Now remember, this is not even going to be seen on my card at all. All right, then I added some foam around the outer edges of my typewriter, making sure not to go anywhere at the top, just around the edges. And then I removed the release paper on those and I'm going to be adhering it directly onto the front of the card. So I've peeled up all the release paper and my paper is temporarily taped to my typewriter so it won't move around. And then I uh, press that down onto the front of the card. I'm gonna remove that tape and give it a little test to make sure that that paper can still move freely going to use the tape to catch it and then I'm just testing it to make sure that it can still come out and it does stop right there at that top edge so I'm going to put a little bit of foam right there and that's going to prevent that paper from sliding completely out I'm going to test it one more time here just to make sure that it kind of moves in and out without any issues and it worked out great so I taped it so it was all the way down and now I'm going to take my pull tab and I'm going to position it just over the top of that window that I've cut out. And I'm going to make a pencil mark so I know where it needs to be positioned, centered or directly over that area. I'm taking my T-square ruler and just drawing a line. This is the back of the front of the card. No one's even going to see it. So that line can just stay there. So I'm going to take off the release paper off my foam tape. And remember that paper is taped to the typewriter on the other side, so it's not going to move around. And then I'm taking my pull tab and I'm lining it up against that pencil line and pressing it down onto that piece of foam tape. So now I've basically built the entire slider mechanism. So I'm going to give it a good test to make sure that it moves up and down without touching that paper and everything looks great. It's a little bit wobbly at the moment, so I'm actually going to create some foam channels on either side of the pull tab. So I'm gonna put it right up, kind of really close to the red tab, but not directly touching it, because I still want that tab to move freely without anything kind of holding it back. So I'm putting that foam tape on either side and then I'm going to take some foam tape and I'm going to add it to either side of the front of this card so that when it's uh, glued or adhered down to my card front, it'll be nice and level. So I just added some more foam, not shy with all the foam on this card. I'm gonna give it one more little test here to make sure, and it's this slides up even better because it has that foam tape kind of guiding it vertically as it's pulled in and out of the typewriter. So I removed the foam pad out of my Misty, turned my card front over, and then pressed a folded card on the back. And that card is the same height as my card design, so it's a little shorter than five and a half. So here's my finished card. I think it turned out so cute, really simple in design. All the color on it comes from that cardstock. So I did test it in a regular A2 envelope, but because of the thickness of the card, it was just a little snug. So I decided to put it inside an A6 envelope. This is actually just slightly bigger than an A2 envelope, and it leaves plenty of room around that card, and it's, it's nice and comfy in there. 
So I'm going to mimic the stripes that are on the front of my card by putting it on with some Copic markers. I'm first going to pencil on some stripes. They're not all the same width. I wanted them to kind of vary in width so that it would have a little, um, a little change, a little difference in the stripes. And then I put a piece of paper, some cardstock inside, because like I said, I'm going to be using Copic markers on the front of my envelope. I kind of lightened those pencil lines with an eraser. And then I just went in and started coloring. And I did the same exact order of stripes in the you know colors as I did on the card. So I used the cardstock on my card to help kind of color match to the right Copic colors. So these are the colors that I found worked best and they amazed me how well the colors match. You'll see here at the end when I show them side by side that the cardstock really does match all of the coloring I did with my Copics. So I'm just kind of using the chisel end of my Copics to color these. I, th I thought the chisel end lended itself to making really straight stripes and it worked out well. Ending with uh, RV66, which is considerably very close to the color of dull pink cardstock. I couldn't believe how close it was. So after I had all of that Copic coloring done, I'm going to remove the paper inside. You can see why it was a great idea to put that cardstock inside because it did bleed through a little bit and that just protected the inside of the envelope and the other side. I then picked out a bunch of postage stamps. This envelope is actually going to Singapore. And I knew with a little bit of the thicker card that it would probably be over one ounce, weighed it was between one and two ounces. So I used the postage calculator on usps.com to figure out how much postage I would need to mail this card to Singapore. Turns out I need $2.80. So with a combination of vintage stamps and forever stamps, which once I mail this at the end of the month, forever stamps will be worth 68 cents a piece. So I totaled that up and I had enough postage to cover all of this. I penciled on the name and a big thank you to, I guess, Chu, Chu Ji, Chu Ji Ying. I'm not sure how to say your name. I hope I hope I said that close. Um, thank you so much for uh, volunteering your address for some mail art. Um, if you would like to submit your address, for consideration for future mail art envelopes, there's a link down below in the video description. So that finishes up the card and envelope for today. Everything I use on the envelope is actually waterproof. Nothing will smudge. So I didn't even need to protect it with microglaze. You, def you definitely could if you wanted to, but really didn't need to in this case. So that's the finished slider card and envelope. Make sure you check out that card kit over at simonsystamp.com. I'll have it linked down below. It's a really great card kit for this month and you get that stamp set and the dies and a bunch of other goodies. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll be back on Friday with another mail our envelope. It'll be number seven. We're cruising right along here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. <music>